Dear friends, it is a pleasure for me to open this event today because we are at the very beginning of the French presidency of the Council of the European Union. It's uh, one semester to act and to focus on our key priorities regarding digital regulation, climate ambition, social protection. It's also a good opportunity to strengthen our partnership with the Indo-Pacific region and especially with India. Last year, with the Porto Summit with Prime Minister Modi, we had this opportunity of a direct political exchange. On uh, October 22nd, we proposed at the EU level for the first time a strategy for the Indo-Pacific region. And on February 22nd, with a minister participation, there will be a high-level discussion again on this concrete strategy and its objectives. When we look at climate, when we look at our cooperation regarding ocean, digital connectivity, infrastructure, all the strategic area areas, including defense and security, we need to do more together. And we want, as France, to use this semester to strengthen this relation and this strategic partnership. So thank you for your contribution. Thank you for your commitment. You can count on me to work on this crucial cooperation. Merci beaucoup et à bientôt. Okay, let me let me maybe just say a, a few words before to launch the discussion and to uh, and to say what the uh, what are the goals of this uh, presidency, what we want to uh, to achieve uh, during this uh, this six months uh, in India. Uh, to be very 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 basic, I, I would say that we we feel that there is a lot of potential and we want to uh, harness this uh, potential. We feel that the uh, EU uh, is still, in India, uh, an underestimated uh, giant and that the, uh, it's true for, it's true basically, of course, for trade, for example, we are number one trade power, we are no, number one uh, trade partner of India, and we feel there's a lot to do, but it's true also for uh, environment, for digital, for health, for all set of uh, security, a set of uh, areas of sector, and we really want to develop uh, these ties. We feel that uh, the EU can be, uh, must be a partner of choice uh, for uh, India to tackle these issues. Basically, um, we've been having, uh, may I say now my, in my capacity as French ambassador, my country has been enjoying a, an amazing partnership with India for decades. I mean, they, uh, a lot of trust and we feel that um, we can uh, now uh, uh, use this knowledge and to uh, uh, to raise to to the EU level to make it even forceful and there's a lot of to uh, to do uh, and it will be much more effective we have a real momentum to do so uh, as you are expert of the uh, India EU relations uh, you've been witnessing uh, the announcement that were, were that were made uh, last year in June uh, during the uh, uh, Porto Leaders Summit, which are uh, were uh, quite uh, robust and uh, ambitious. And we we feel it's time now uh, to use this uh, geopolitical moment uh, and to yield some very concrete results. So uh, let me just flag uh, three priorities. Uh, number one, and you won't be surprised, uh, the Indo-Pacific. Uh, the EU strategy was uh, announced on the uh, 16th of September last year. Uh, it's uh, a real uh, game changer. It's going to, uh, uh, to produce a lot of results in the coming years. It's as often uh, with EU, it doesn't, uh, it's no show off. It's a very comprehensive, very robust, uh, very uh, serious uh, documents. And you should not, and I'm sure you're not doing that, but you shouldn't underestimate it. I mean, the, uh, the idea basically is to, to work together to provide uh, an alternative uh, for, for the region to provide choices uh, and uh, for countries who want to develop, who want to improve their connectivity, who want to uh, uh, get their security. We want to provide positive alternatives 
based on our values of democracy, human rights, rule of law, uh, respect for multilateralism, respect of sovereignty, obviously. And by doing so, uh, we, we know that we can uh, use the full resources of the EU. You may have seen that the EU has uh, announced uh, uh, a huge plan to finance uh, infrastructures and uh, uh, called Global Gateway, and it's a plan of 300 billion euros, which is quite uh, substantial. The uh, very important uh, moment for, for this uh, uh, Indo-Pacific uh, strategy will be uh, a forum which will be organized in, in Paris on the 22nd of February uh, with uh, all, obviously, all the EU members plus uh, key uh, countries from the Indo-Pacific at uh, ministerial level. And we are very honored that the Minister Jeshanka has agreed uh, to join. And obviously, he will have a keynote role given uh, the central position uh, of India in this Indo-Pacific uh, uh, strategy. Um, let me uh, say a word about uh, trade. Uh, obviously, uh, you have noticed that uh, the decision was made in, uh, in Porto during the leader summit uh, to relaunch uh, the negotiation of uh, comprehensive trade and investment agreement, which means three components. Uh, one, a free trade agreement. Two, an agreement on the protection of uh, geographical indications. And three, an agreement on uh, investment protection. I mean, we are very committed uh, to the success of this negotiation. And we, we really feel that there's room for advanced, for ambitious, for mutually beneficial agreements. Uh, here, here in Delhi to support this, uh, uh, this uh, effort and also to help more and more uh, uh, European companies develop uh, some business in, in India. We will also uh, push uh, for the uh, creation of a European Chamber of Commerce in India. We feel uh, can be a very, very good support to our national chambers and uh, to help the business community and also to uh, uh, to make some uh, recommendations for, for the discussion for the negotiations or to propose also uh, uh, policy uh, ideas to uh, to the indian authority i think it's uh, it could be really useful and um, if everything goes well we would like to launch this uh, eu chamber in may uh, in May, you know, it's a very important month for Europe. Uh, it's, uh, and we have uh, Europe Day in May, and we feel that would be a good occasion. Let me uh, say just a word now to, to, to conclude on the, uh, on the third priority, which obviously is uh, climate change and biodiversity. I mean, in the aftermath of COP26, in the run up to uh, COP20, COP50 negotiations. Uh, we feel uh, uh, that we need to engage more and more uh, with India uh, to achieve uh, new progress. And there's, that there's a window. Uh, we, we are uh, fully committed to supporting the energy transition in India. I mean, we have a lot of uh, tools to do so. Uh, want to help to scale up uh, solar energy capacity building aspect to link to solar. Uh, on biodiversity, there's a lot to do also for uh, the post 2020 uh, global framework. Uh, we want to focus also, as you know, on the, on the ocean and the blue economy uh, and also uh, engage uh, in a new. Uh, uh, efforts to fight against certain sort of pollution, especially uh, uh, against a single use plastic. So but I'm not going to be much longer. Uh, the most important thing is that uh, now uh, we hear from you and uh, uh, I, I would uh, uh, love to uh,
get all your feedback, your input, your ideas, your proposal, your recommendations. Uh, we shall start. Shall we give the floor first to, uh, to Hugo as our uh, new ambassador here? Or, um, yes. Well, thank you. Hugo, you have the floor. Thank you. Thank you very much, Manuel. Thank you for, um, for inviting me and uh, congratulations. Congratulations to, 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 to France and, and to you personally on, on this occasion, on the, at the very start of the, the French presidency of the, of the Council. And I, I think this presidency comes at a very uh, a crucial moment in the sense that what we see is um, is the EU um, India strategic partnership gaining um, considerable uh, momentum? Um, a, a momentum, a trend which has been confirmed and, uh, and cemented by at, at the leaders' meeting in Porto in, in May. So, um, if I had to define the state of the EU India strategic partnership today in one sentence, I would definitely say that uh, it's full of, of potential and, and of opportunity. And, and let me try to, to give you some, some examples and, and topics where the UN India cooperation can make a difference. And you have already uh, raised several of these. So uh, let me start uh, by recalling that traditionally the, the EU India partnership is, is grounded in, in a strong economic and trade uh, relations. Uh, the European Union is one of the, of the largest trade partners, is an important investor in India, and, and India, Indian companies have started to invest considerably in, in the European Union. But I think we all agree that much uh, remains to be done, that um, there is much potential to untap. And that's where the decision taken by our leaders in Porto comes in as particularly important, the decision to relaunch the FTA negotiation and start new negotiation investment protection and on geographical indication agreement. I, I, I definitely believe that the gains could be huge for, for, for both. So a very important market there. Climate change, you said it, um, Emmanuel, climate change is crucial. Um, it's an existential threat for all of us. And, and the international community has come together in Glasgow to map the road ahead in order to keep, uh, in order to stop global warming and and keep it under the 1.5 Celsius mark. But, but that's only the, the beginning of this global um, endeavor where, where the European Union and India have a crucial role to play. So we need to act fast, we need to be ambitious. And both the European Union and India have set for themselves very ambitious targets, particularly when it comes to, to renewables and solar. And um, I, I think this sets the ground for a, for a good cooperation for working together in you know, order to make the green transition a success. I think we all realize the challenges. It's not going to be easy, uh, but, but the writing is, is on the wall. We, we need a greener energy mix uh, and we must achieve it quickly. While at the same time, no one uh, must be left behind. So trade, um, climate, the digital transformation, it's, it's both a challenge and, and an opportunity. And it's happening under our eyes at, at lightning speed. It has the potential of making our economies greener and of making our lives much uh, easier. We, we have seen that our, our indispensable digital solution has been to address, to, to face uh, the challenges of, of life in, in, COVID, in the COVID situation. And, and together, uh, the European Union and India can, uh, can have a positive influence in, in developing global standards on digital, uh, standards based on democratic values on, um, uh, which are fit for open societies, uh, a human-centric digital revolution. And this is also obviously important when it comes to the issue of data protection, seamless international transfer of, of data, which is key to growth and uh, economic recovery. Um, Connectivity. You, you, you mentioned, um, Emmanuel, the, the, the Global Gateway Initiative, and specifically with India, we have set in motion a new India Connectivity Partnership. It's, it's an important example, I believe, of how we try to translate into practice the, the convergence of interests and the shared values uh, between EU and India. We want to support quality infrastructure. We want to um, 
We want to have goods, people, and services to, to be connected, to flow freely. And, and we want to create links and not dependencies, as, as the president of the commission said uh, very, very recently. And I believe that's also India's uh, approach. And, and the four together, and together with member states, that's one instance where it's absolutely important that we work as Team Europe, uh, member states together with European institutions. And, and, in, and European tools such as the European Investment Bank, we, we need to adopt um, a Team Europe approach um, to, uh, to foster connectivity and implement sustainable projects. The Indo-Pacific, uh, you, you mentioned it, you mentioned the conference, absolutely uh, crucial. Um, I, I think our, our approach, the EU and India approach to the Indo-Pacific is very similar with a strong emphasis on, on multilateral cooperation, respect for international law. So we want the region to stay open, stable and rules-based. Um, last but not least, security and defense. Um, that's an area which is also picking up. And, and, and for instance, last year, the, the Indian Navy and the UATALANT operation conducted the joint naval exercise with the French naval assets, if I, if I remember. Uh, correctly. Well, I could continue on and on, um, but let me simply mention here COVID. Um, COVID has made apparent that we need to work together on issues such as um, um, the security of global supply chain or, or a global approach to, to epidemics, um, uh, an approach based on transparency, on solidarity and international cooperation. The, the European Union and its member states together have exported more than 1 billion vaccine doses worldwide in 2021 through COVAX and, and bilaterally. And India has also been extremely active regionally and beyond in exporting vaccines. So I think that's another situation contingency which has brought us together. But so let me conclude here. And, 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 um, and underscore what you said that the ties between the EU and India are, are stronger uh, than never, and that's definitely a trend that I expect to continue in the years to come, and I expect the, the, the French presidency for in the, the uh, for coming six months to play a very important role in that respect. Thank you. Thank you, Hugo. Uh, I cannot say better. Um, and Ambassador uh, Mukherjee wants to say a word, or whoever wants to take the floor, basically. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur l'Ambassadeur. Um, C'est un grand plaisir. Et je vais parler en anglais, comme vous m'avez demandé de parler en anglais. So I will speak in English, uh, though I thought the French presidency uh, should actually, even in India, be conducted only in French, but never mind. Um, it's, it's a great pleasure to be here, and I would like to begin, uh, Excellency, by what you yourself stated, which was uh, that the French presidency will bridge a gap, um, and I will go further and say, bridge a gap in the understanding that most Indians have, and I've written about it in my book, about the connectivity between individual bilateral countries, such as France, with whom we have the most wonderful bilateral relationship, and the European Union, with whom we have a fantastic strategic partnership like we have with France. And with a French presidency at this crucial point in international relations, India and Indians, not policymakers who understand, will be able to make that seamless connect between the presidency and France and the European Union, because never has the world needed more European Union leadership at a time when we are going through multiple crises. They have been mentioned here. Uh, COVID is just one of them, but more than anything else, an emerging world order which challenges the old Westphalian order, which challenges the basic um, pillars which have held international peace and security together, and where and who can defend that order better than an invigorated European Union under a French presidency and India situated where we are in the Indo-Pacific. I'll begin with the Indo-Pacific first and then move on to the other issues because I have five minutes. I'd like to first of all say that in a strategic partnership between India and the EU, with France at the helm, India attaches the greatest importance to the EU-India Pacific strategy, which was 
announced on 16 September 21. There was an ambassador who was who was appointed, Ambassador uh, Gabriel Vicente. He he could not come to India because of the COVID uh, pandemic, but I'm sure he will come. Ambassador Astuto had had mentioned it earlier, and the fact that for once on such an important strategic issue, EU and India have the same vision, which is which has just been spelled out by His Excellency Ambassador Astuto which is a rule-based order. And I would like to add that we need to understand that the Indo-Pacific is central to the peace and prosperity of both India and the European Union. Uh, majority of EU's trade is in this region. We need to ensure that this, uh, this region is rule-based, it is, it is uh, free of movement, and that it is not menaced by the rise of an aggressive or militaristic power that certainly in India's neighborhood is a very great problem uh, for India. Uh, we are extremely pleased about the ministerial forum, which is going to be held in February, and the fact that our external affairs minister will be there. We very much welcome the warm words that His Excellency the French ambassador has said about his presence. On our part, India looks very much forward to participating in this ministerial forum and taking, taking forward many of the issues, which include, again, another very important initiative, which under the French presidency will be taken, taken forward, or which, which is the global gateway. The global gateway for us in India, the way we understand it, is, is, is a natural answer to connectivity issues, including the challenges posed to the world and to India by the BRI. We need the global gateway for so many reasons, which are common to European strate strategic uh, issues and India. We need the global ga gateway to develop infrastructure worldwide and to meet global challenges on all the issues which have been outlined, including global health, climate change, biodiversity, etc. But more than that, we need the global gateway, which we see as a critical European strategy to build resilient connections between both within Europe and between Europe and its natural partners in the Indo-Pacific, that's India and Japan, and to, and to build links and not dependencies. This is very important. This is something that the European Union has underlined, and we really welcome it. And we, uh, we very much welcome the connectivity partnership that we have now with the European Union, and we look forward to taking it further. Let me then let me then move to some of the other issues which are very important, which have been outlined. And climate change is, of course, one of them. It was President Macron who first supported our Median Maiden International Solar Alliance Summit uh, on 11th March 2018, and it is the it is under France and the French presidency now that we look forward to developing. Uh, our partnership and our cooperation on climate change and biodiversity issues which are very close to the strategic priorities of the European Union. And we would be able to develop uh, our partnership much better uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the months to come uh, till, till, till June. We also uh, have been encouraging the European Union to engage with leaders from the African and, and uh, Pacific regions with regard to Indian solar panels, which are cheap, which are available, and which are, again, a great way to move the European India Connect on climate change and solar issues forward and encourage developing countries, uh, least, developing, uh, least developed countries to look at this alternative. There was a mention about the pandemic. The pandemic has caused havoc, but the managing of the pandemic is something that one can justly justly be uh, proud of both in Europe, in EU, and in India. In India, for instance, we have been able to, with our indigenous vaccine, vaccinate such a huge number of people that sometimes I find it difficult to explain, for example, to my Dutch friends, that the population of Delhi is 21 million and 80% of 21 million are fully vaccinated in Delhi as we speak and, and the vaccination is going on. Uh, we need the support of the European Union under the French presidency 
to get that um, to get what we what we have asked the WTO, which is a positive response to vaccines and a patent waiver uh, for India on the on the COVID vaccine. Uh, this is something that is really required. European Union, I'm sure, will will support us on this because this will help. Like in the uh, crisis of uh, HIV AIDS, this will help to make the Indian vaccine and Indian medicines which we are developing available to the to LDCs at an affordable price. Because in an interconnected world, if everybody is not vaccinated, the moment we come out of a crisis, a variant will emerge among those who are not vaccinated in regions which are not vaccinated, like we saw recently for Omicron. And again, the if the economy will go into a spin, the global economy. I would like to uh, refer to trade issues. It is extremely important. And most many of us who have worked for so many years, including myself, on a BTIA, which almost saw the light of day when I was actually uh, JSEW uh, Sandeep, uh, and we lost that golden opportunity because of crises on both sides, which also emerged like wildfire, like the pandemic and swept those uh, promises which were made on both sides, uh, swept them off. And when we came back, uh, we found, uh, unfortunately, that on both sides, conditions had changed and we had to go back to basics. But yes, it is quite possible. It, is, it, it can be foreseen that we would have an agreement because policymakers in India recognize, they do recognize that with such an important strategic partner, as the European Union, and the fact that we have such huge bilateral trade relationships with individual countries of the European Union, including, for instance, France and Netherlands, it is it is inconceivable to look at a future without a trade agreement, which is not in the interest of both sides. So uh, I would like to I would like to end here by 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 saying that. I'd be happy to join in the discussion, but I would I would just say that a French presidency in this crucial period, a resilient European Union with a, a, a EU Indo-Pacific strategy that is so close to India's uh, strategic vision, uh, the decision to have a robust common foreign and security policy, the decision to go ahead with with strengthening the defense connect between India and the EU, something that India has wanted for a long time, uh, helps to put the necessary hard power element in that strategic partnership, which is very important for India because of the neighborhood in which it finds itself. India looks for both soft and hard power in a strategic partner. And the European Union now, under French presidency, will answer both India's requirements on hard power and soft power. And therefore, I have a really good feeling, a win-win feeling about this presidency. Merci beaucoup, uh, uh, Bouddha, uh, l'ambassadeur de la France et Monsieur Ambassadeur Astuto. Merci. Merci, uh, Ambassador Mukherjee. Very, very convincing and very comprehensive. Thank you. Um, who is next? Uh, Sandeep, you, you will come in. Thank you. Thank you, Ambassador. And I think I should uh, now get in uh, because uh, otherwise I'll run out of talking points after uh, your presentation and uh, Ambassador Hugo's presentation and my former colleague's uh, presentation. I think uh, I may I may be repetitive, but uh, but still, I think before Professor uh, Salva, Salma Bawa uh, speaks, I think I should speak because otherwise I'll not have much to speak. First of all, uh, I want to thank uh, Ambassador Lena uh, for this initiative. Uh, congratulations to France for assuming uh, presidency of the EU Council. I think uh, it's a very, very opportune time uh, as India is uh, strengthening its ties with the EU and has such robust ties with, with France. I think uh, it's, a, it's a very uh, happy convergence of, of, of uh, occasions and, and we will work very closely with France uh, for the success of uh, the French presidency. A lot of things have been said, but I would uh, like to uh, say a few things uh, from our perspective on, on, from the perspective of a person and the team which is working uh, on a daily basis on, on 
strengthening our ties with with France and 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 the EU, and and uh, I think just like uh, the role uh, uh, Portugal played uh, in in the presidency in the first semester of 2021. I think uh, the time is ripe for France also to play a similar role, which which will bring together or bring India and, and the EU, EU closer. Um, as uh, everyone knows, India and the EU are natural partners. Uh, we are uh, actually uh, very similar in the way we are constituted, you know, uh, you know, multicultural entities, uh, plurality, uh, many ethnicities, uh, vibrant democracies and and as many say, we are the two largest democratic, uh, you know, uh, areas in the world. So it is, but natural that we should we should work uh, closer together. Also, India has been transforming, and uh, despite the challenges of COVID, uh, we have seen uh, lots that have happened in India: economic reforms, you know, uh, many things that we have been able to do. Uh, uh, Ambassador Ugo mentioned uh, our vaccine diplomacy. You know, uh, we have actually. Uh, uh, you know, uh, Indian diplomacy in the COVID time has been uh, has been quite remarkable in the terms uh, in, in terms of what we have been able to achieve, uh, despite the constraints of uh, of um, of COVID. And uh, one such uh, 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 achievements has been uh, uh, deepening of our ties with with the EU. And uh, everyone has mentioned uh, the India EU leaders meeting, which was held in. Uh, May of last year, but I think it's a very remarkable uh, moment. It's a remarkable uh, happening where all 27, 28 rather, I would say, uh, 27 from EU and our Prime Minister were in a room together. I think uh, such an event hasn't happened uh, much in the past where everyone spoke uh, more or less uh, in, in same words and same languages. There was so much of uh, positivity in, in that room. And I think uh, it is for us now to deliver on, on, on the mandate given by our leaders, our 28 uh, leaders. Uh, over the last year, uh, 21, I think it's important to uh, recapitulate a bit of what has happened. Um, you know, of course, uh, uh, the leader summit happened. And then uh, we had our high level dialogue on, on climate change. We had a high level dialogue on trade and investment. We had the India EU energy panel, which had not been held for five years. We have a work uh, plan on, on clean uh, uh, energy. Uh, we had uh, the India EU ad hoc uh, uh, human rights dialogue that had not been held for, for several years. So many of the mechanisms that we have, we have a large number of mechanisms with the EU. I think we were able to activate uh, and have meetings of most of the mechanisms. So I think uh, under the circumstances of, of COVID, I think that is very, very creditable. And the more we met, we found that there was so much of con uh, convergence between India and the EU and, and you know, uh, we set uh, higher targets uh, for our um, for ourselves and uh, also you know uh, Hugo and others have mentioned about uh, climate and energy partnership I think that's uh, one of the kernels of our relationship and and there is a lot of uh, not only with with the EU but also the member states we have a very good working relationship on on energy transition with with France uh, we had the visit of the French uh, minister uh, we had uh, we also have similar uh, you know, robust uh, exchanges with many member states, including Germany, France, uh, uh, Netherlands, uh, Italy, and, and it is growing. So, you know, not only with the EU, I think it's always a play between EU and, and the member states, you know, and, and, and we are always trying to, to, to catch up with each other. I think it's, it's a very healthy uh, competition that is, that is there and, and uh, we, we are up to, up to the challenge. You know, uh, one uh, point which Ambassador uh, Mukherjee mentioned, and I would like to reiterate, is is the depth of our relationship with France, and it it is it is uh, not only economic, trade, investment, but also very strategic. And uh, Hugo mentioned our defense uh, partnership. I would like to say is that we are now keen on on a more uh, depth in our uh, defense and security relationship with with the EU. Uh, we are we are going to have a series of dialogues. Uh, early next month, but because of COVID, those have got pushed back. But I just want to say today that, you know, we are also looking uh, uh, very, very closely at um, working uh, on PESCO uh, under the French uh, uh, presidency. And uh, there are many projects coordinated with France under PESCO. Uh, and uh, we are going to uh, get back to you very soon on, on some, of, uh, uh, some cooperation uh, under PESCO. So that is a development on which we are working very closely. And I, I believe that 
unless we have some substantive projects uh, in defense and security, uh, then uh, you know it's we cannot limit our defense and security uh, ties to only joint exercises and and exchange of delegations. We have to have some meat in it, and I think uh, we are working uh, on that. Uh, Ambassador Lena mentioned uh, French priorities, and also uh, uh, the French Secretary of State mentioned uh, uh, French priorities. We uh, we would like to work on 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 those as well. I think uh, there is a happy coincidence between uh, the French uh, priorities and and the India EU priorities on on digital um, uh, markets, on green transition, uh, on defense, as I mentioned before, uh, on connectivity, and on uh, the Indo-Pacific. I've gone into some detail on on uh, the defense uh, partnership but i would like to just highlight here uh, our trade and investment um, relationship uh, as you know uh, the leaders had mandated us to to start the negotiations but uh, i am slightly disheartened that we have not been able to, do, uh, to start the negotiations uh, more or less at the same time uh, you know we had the india uk summit and and uh, uh, you know, there also it was decided to to start the negotiations for the free trade agreement, and you may have noticed that the India EU free trade uh, negotiations were launched uh, just last week, and uh, this week the negotiations have begun, and and we are closely um, involved in those negotiations, and uh, you know we have a timeline which is very very uh, aggressive. Um, uh, you know, sometime by the end of this year or early next year, our free trade agreement with the UK should be ready. Uh, but uh, with the EU, we have not been able to move forward, uh, you know, and I think uh, there is a lot of political will. Uh, we, we have been speaking to many EU leaders and uh, uh, including uh, last uh, month, uh, early this year, earlier this month, the conversation between our prime minister and the new German chancellor, and there was a lot of uh, expression of, of will. But I think uh, that the two teams need to now sit down and, uh, and start negotiation, negotiating. Uh, without too many preconditions because uh, i think if you set too many preconditions then meeting the preconditions by the time you meet the preconditions a new set of conditions start obtaining so we will never be able to reach our goal so i would uh, take this opportunity in highlighting deep interest of india in starting the negotiations and and put everything on the table uh, we are uh, with the with with the uk for example uh, we are negotiating on 26 chapters 26 groups are there and it is very very ambitious and, and similarly, there is no reason why we will hold back our ambition with, with, with the EU. So uh, if, if uh, we could uh, quickly start our, uh, if EU could announce its negotiator and, and, and have the first preliminary meetings, I think it will be very good. Because I think without that trade and investment and geographical indications agreement, you know, some ballast in the relationship is missing. Uh, we also have had very robust uh, science and technology uh, cooperation. But, uh, you know, we are now seeing some kind of plateauing, uh, you know, there are some issues with uh, with Horizon Europe, where we are unable to, to accept um, the framework under which we have to operate. So I think, again, uh, this is need, there's a need for our, our, our teams to sit together and, and work out more very creative solutions to our uh, ambitions in, in science and uh, technology. In the Indo-Pacific, of course, there is so much of coincidence. Uh, all the previous speakers have spoken about it. Uh, we are uh, very, very uh, upbeat on, on the Indo-Pacific and uh, we would like to see uh, the realization of the connectivity partnership that we um, announced with the EU uh, last year uh, and uh, the EU's uh, connectivity gateway. Uh, there is a lot of similarity and, and coincidence between the two. So in fact, uh, you know, if you see the two documents, they, 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 are, they look very, very similar. So that may, gives us a lot of uh, optimism and we are very keen to work with the EU. We are planning uh, with the EU delegation here a series of, of workshops on the, on, the, on the various pillars of the connectivity partnership so that uh, you know, we get ideas are thrown up and then uh, we bring together uh, not only uh, bureaucrats and government officials, but also industry and, and businesses and banks and investors so that you know, they, they, they talk to each other and, and find out what they can do on, on connectivity. Uh, we also look forward to the uh, ministerial forum for cooperation in the Indo-Pacific that uh, France will be hosting. We, we, we propose to come up with uh, new ideas and, and, and work with other partners in the Indo-Pacific. Uh, we believe uh, that European presence, EU presence, French presence in the Indo-Pacific is very important. We want greater en engagement with uh, Europe in the Indo-Pacific. 
because uh, uh, like uh, EU and Europe, uh, we believe in a multipolar world and uh, we cannot have a multipolar world uh, if, we if we don't have a multipolar Asia. So I think that is uh, the baseline from where we come and uh, we would encourage uh, more uh, in contacts in the Indo-Pacific context uh, with European uh, nations. And uh, we are again uh, very happy that uh, France is holding the presidency for the first six months of 2022. I think a lot can be achieved, uh, not only uh, because of the depth of our uh, relations with France, but also I think over the, uh, the engagements in the last year with the EU has thrown up many new ideas. And, and, uh, and um, uh, one of them, of course, is, is, is the Green Partnership uh, on, on uh, not only clean energy, but also on, on certain areas of the, of the SDG. So uh, all in all, I think a very, very propitious moment uh, for India-EU relations. And uh, I would uh, end by saying that uh, uh, means when I joined this job, I was, I, was, uh, I was not very sure as to how much time uh, the EU relationship will, will take. And now I find that, you know, uh, at least half my time uh, is devoted to, to, to relations with the EU. And uh, Ambassador Lena, I would say that uh, most of the rest of the time is taken by France. So, uh, you know, uh, I think uh, all energies are on the, on this, and all eyes are on 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 your presidency of the EU. And I'm sure it'll be a roaring success. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sandy, for your kind and wise words. Uh, and for your daily uh, commitment to, to, to push forward the uh, India-EU relations. Thank you. Uh, Professor Samad Bhava, Bhava, sorry, may I give you a floor? You, you have the nicest spot of all because you heard everything has been said and you can comment, you can... Uh, uh, you can... Uh, Oppose you. You can take opposing views. You can do. You can qualify. You can do what you want. Please. <laughs> Good evening, Ambassador, and thank you so much. Uh, let me uh, welcome everybody. Um, as uh, Ambassador Chakravarti said, uh, coming in the end means uh, you know everything. What is important has to be said. So I think I'll take the devil's advocate position this evening. Be the more academic analyst over here since everybody is the practitioner on the panel. Um, let me first congratulate uh, the French ambassador and France on the uh, six month rotating presidency. It's a very important moment of agenda setting done by member states along with the European Union. So I think uh, uh, you know, it really puts the spotlight on what is about working together when one tries to look at the European Union, which is a multi-headed phenomena. Um, I think uh, first and foremost, uh, you know, looking at the year ahead and the first six months, I think what is, stays dominant in foreign policy for anyone anywhere in the world is that disruption is the new normal. I think our ability to put, uh, you know, that we have now set coordinates uh, is something which has disappeared. Uh, just as the world was looking into, uh, you know, as the year was closing last year, that we may be moving into a more normal routine has been undone extremely fast. And I think that is uh, going to call upon us on our ability to be resilient, uh, to be fleet footed, and, and for especially for public policy to be able to respond uh, in such um, uh, an arena where, uh, you know, time is uh, a luxury that can no longer be afforded. Uh, a very important point for us uh, in India is, uh, you know, when we look at our foreign policy priorities, I would also flag that we are looking at, um, you know, the 75th anniversary of India's independence, which we would be celebrating later this year. And it's a very opportune moment to think of the kind of threshold uh, as India is, you know, coming of age at a very different time, you know, each of its uh, 25 year periods mark a growth at different intervals. Uh, and I think the foreign policy priorities uh, you know, are very crucial now in a very uh, changing geopolitical and a geoeconomic context. Uh, for India, the threshold is of two things. I mean, there is both uh, new opportunities and new challenges coming up uh, at, as it navigates its, its foreign policy. And precisely for the India-EU relation, I think what is extremely important over here to flag uh, is the ideational closeness now needs a new uh, pragmatic 
uh, you know, reality check of delivering uh, policy options, uh, deliverables and outputs. Something which one can say uh, that the last few years, when we look at the um, summits which have taken place between India and the EU, uh, two things stand out. One was the, uh, that despite the COVID, despite the pandemic, we kept to our schedule of having the summit. I think that's extremely important that uh, that momentum did not get lost. Uh, secondly, uh, rather in a, pandic, a pandemic situation, what was also extremely noteworthy was the ability to really add more engine to the India-EU partnership. Um, and I think uh, that's, uh, I draw attention to two important developments. One was when the uh, roadmap, strategic roadmap 2025 was adopted. And then secondly, last year, you know, we saw the connectivity partnership tying in with the uh, geopolitical uh, and uh, you know geostrategic changes which were ha happening in the broader region of the global south, especially the Indo-Pacific. So I think the ability for um, New Delhi and Brussels, along with the member states, to be able to you know agree on setting a roadmap and the connectivity partnership also showed uh, that there is a new understanding of the political reality and why the engagement could not have been business as usual, which was in the past. Uh, all of you have emphasized on the potential of the uh, relationship. And I think that's a word which is often used. Uh, potential talks about possibilities. Uh, the question here to ask is, why has there been a slowness? Um, you know, Ambassador Chakrati just uh, you know, pointed about how the India-UK um, bilateral trade agreement has already kind of you know, got off the practice session and is already on the racetrack, if I should assume it that way, uh, you know. And uh, this is something where we would need to ask is how do we now uh, convert all of this uh, into much more than just the optics of having a partnership? I think that is extremely important and where, uh, you know, the uh, current French presidency would then act as that kind of a catalytic agent in this. Um, let me just, uh, you know, take all the points which have been articulated by all of you and put it under different categories as to what is crucial to take it forward. I think the first thing in a pandemic driven world where geoeconomics and geo strategy has become, uh, you know, the defining hallmark of the canvas of foreign policy. I think what we need is leadership. I think that is something which is going to be coming out. Especially welcome what Ambassador Chakravati just said about uh, you know cooperation on defense and security matters, and why he said PESCO would be the new platform for one of the kind of things, and why it's not just enough to have joint uh, exercises, uh, you know. So I think leadership uh, is extremely crucial, and uh, here I think on the uh, the menu that we have over here, many things have been said both on the uh, outputs side, uh, if you look at the last two summits, one can really pick and choose from there. But what stands out is, uh, you know, a steady underperformance of the India-EU partnership. I think that uh, needs to be now uh, addressed and why we are, I think, in an opportune moment to take this forward. Uh, let me start with, uh, you know, the whole issue of the pandemics and why this is one area where visibility, delivery, and it would be a game changer. India has, uh, you know, uh, independently developed the vaccine has also not only developed it has also shown uh, in terms of both delivery and output the ability to introduce in terms of public health uh, the ability to take a vaccine to its people uh, I think and when we talk about India's own demography and the percentage of the world which gets vaccinated and why vaccinating the entire world uh, is the only way to go ahead uh, I think India has not been partnered enough by others. So India has shown the capacity to do it. I think uh, this is one area where India and EU can now take it to third countries in terms of you know other vaccines also being brought into India and where India could really emerge as a vaccine hub in terms of having both the capacity and the capability uh, you know, to make this happen. Um, I think that's, that's a very important uh, point. A second uh, issue over here, uh, which, which I point out is on uh, the Indo-Pacific, which has constantly come up and which I think will be very important also during the French presidency. You've seen the formation of groupings already take place. We've got two quads over here. We've got the Akus over here. All of it pointing to, uh, you know, while saying that, yes, it has to be an open Indo-Pacific, 
I think we're also seeing that there are going to be different permutation and combinations of economics, politics, security, and culture, which are going to manifest over here. Uh, and the coming uh, uh, Indo-Pacific Forum uh, you know, in France would probably also show how it is being developed and being viewed at uh, from a European perspective with a French imprint on it. Uh, I think this is another area where it becomes extremely crucial where India and France, at least during the time of this, um, the French presidency, what is it that we can do as something which carries a, um, you know, a joint branding with the Euro European Union? If that is possible, I think would actually uh, you know, take forward in terms of a deliverable and a concrete example of what joint leadership can produce over here. A third critical area which I would like to flag, uh, you know, which is also part of the India-EU strategic partnership, but which also needs to be put, is the return of regional politics with the Big Bang. Uh, and here, let me talk about the fall of uh, the government in Afghanistan uh, and, you know, what that is creating as ripples um, across the region over here. If you talk of political instability, uh, the different kind of challenging security threats, the economic viability of a state in, in India's uh, own region, uh, regional neighborhood, uh, and the implications for the global world cannot be overemphasized over here. And I think this is where we again see uh, how do we take uh, the values that we say are, which are fundamental to India and the European Union, how do we take it forward in terms of working together for regional stability? Uh, this is something where I think both sides can really partner and we should uh, you know, think of doing more. Uh, to me. I mean, the EU has come up with emergency aid and all of that, but uh, more can be done. Um, a fourth point over here connected to the regional is the multilateral. And while both sides have endorsed it, uh, I think it's also important to ask uh, that the Indo-Pacific is still an area where the rules of engagement, apart from the law of the seas I'm talking about, uh, beyond that, but the rules of engagement for what the Indo-Pacific region stands is still very open, similarly as uh, the cyberspace is. And while the EU has delivered its own GDPR and India is also to develop its own, I think we are now looking at how probably we can find uh, areas of convergence, but also areas where we have to think and this is also more true for New Delhi, where it has to be also the agenda setter. I think this is extremely important uh, looking ahead. Um, all the panelists have also mentioned climate and it goes without saying that it's, it's no longer a luxury uh, that anybody can afford. I think with the pandemic, the slowing uh, economic growth across the board uh, and uh, the kind of consequences we are going to face, uh, I think um, it's also very important over here uh, in the context of uh, a, a development agenda uh, that the um, SDGs have actually, you know, taken a back seat in terms of what the pandemic has done. And so that offers us an opportunity, I'd like to flag since it has not been put on the table, as an area where India and EU along, you know, with France can work on seeing that we get back uh, to the SDGs in some ways to see that the um, the loss of equity, the lo loss of um, access to resources which has taken place, and the immense asymmetry which the pandemic has created, uh, you know, in some ways can be addressed also within the framework of um, the India-EU strategic partnership. Uh, let me uh, conclude over here by saying that, uh, you know, here is a long-standing uh, India-EU relation. We also have a very long-standing Indo-French relation. And so it would uh, be an opportune moment when we see how both these equations are tied together in terms of uh, you know, the six months uh, really making some of these elements. Obviously, everything cannot be addressed. I already see that the Indo-Pacific is already on the agenda. Uh, and so that's a very, very welcome development. A few more of these, if they are picked out and pushed, uh, the digital has been pointed about uh, by the French ambassador. Um, and I think the values and interests have also been stated uh, by the French president as part of the French vision. Uh, I think this would show that uh, how do we now take a bit of the digital, the connectivity and our people together uh, would really uh, you know, show that there is a real delivery on the ground in terms of the uh, long-term future of the uh, India-EU strategic partnership. Thank you so much.
Thank you, thank you very much for, for all your comments. I, and I really think we are on, on, on the same page. I mean, we you, you always uh, talk about values and uh, democracy, rule of law, uh, um, attachment to multilateralism to explain the, uh, uh, the solidity of the partnership between the EU and India. I, I must say, I think we should add something else. I think we are, uh, we Europeans and, uh, and obviously Indians, we are very much uh, uh, independent countries, independent oriented. We want to make our own decisions. We want to uh, master our destiny. And we and we we know that uh, if we don't want to be the junior partner of uh, that big power, that other big power, we have we have to cooperate between the EU and India. We have to cooperate on, on security, as been said, on technology, on uh, on uh, on many 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 sectors, and that's the best way to to retain our independence in a world which will be increasingly uh, competitive and. Uh, uh, also dominated by certain countries, so it's very, it's very important. I think we should keep that in mind. Uh, I've seen a very strong uh, emphasis on at least on two of you uh, on uh, on the trade issue, uh, and I mean you. I seen some some sort of frustration on the pace of the negotiation and discussion on the trade and the free trade agreements, uh, and you 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 a bit compared to the discussion with the UK. But well, um, I must just uh, remind us not the same scale of stakes uh, in the two, the two baskets, honestly. Uh, I think the, the EU negotiation is, uh, is much more complex. And, uh, it, uh, and if it succeeds, it will be uh, much more forceful, by the way, given the scale uh, of, the, of the economies and what is, what is at stake. Yeah? Uh, but, uh, I can, but Hugo will be... Uh, uh, will be more able uh, than I am to uh, to to, uh, to 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 talk on that. But I, I must say that uh, as member states, we are, we are uh, all very committed on an ambitious and a balanced and mutually beneficial agreement. And um, the discussions have been going on. They, they came to a halt in uh, in 2013. But we 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 we've been uh, listening to the to um, uh, uh, to the spirit and to uh, the, the statements by the authorities of India, and uh, we, we really feel that we can discuss in good faith. Uh, last thing about just about the uh, uh, you've been asking about what's the uh, uh, what's the philosophy, what's the strategy for uh, the EU strategy for the Indo Pacific, what. Uh, uh, what, what, is, what is its uh, trademark? What is, how it is. Uh, basically, I think we we try to promote, and you, it's, it's reflected in the docu strategy document. We want to promote uh, a positive approach, not com not confrontational, global, comprehensive, not only security but also connectivity, also environment, also a lot of things. Uh, and we don't. We really want to stay clear from. Uh, uh, any uh, uh, Cold War spirit or something which would at least raise the tensions. We want to uh, provide alternative. We want to provide an alternative to our model, to the Chinese model in the region. We see it very clearly. But we, we want to do it in a, in a smart way, a positive way. And I think uh, uh, we, we've been discussing with uh, uh, many states in the region, India obviously, but Indonesia and all the states in Asia, and I think that's very, what they, very much that's what they want and they welcome this sort of approach. That being said, I've been too long. Uh, I'm sure one of the uh, of our panelists wants to to take the floor again and uh, and comment or add anything. Ambassador Mukherjee, please. I just uh, wanted, um, uh, uh, Excellency, to underline the fact that I share your views with regard to the India-UK uh, FTA because I recall that when we were negotiating the India-UBTIA in the days when we thought we would get an agreement, we had a lot of problems with the UK we, because 
the UK economy is a service economy like India's, and they were uh, opposed to any concessions being given to us in sectors which were very similar to their economy. So, uh, first of all, it's a free trade agreement. It's not a BTIA. Uh, second of all, I actually am quite reticent. Oh, I hope it will get off. Uh, but there are, given the similarity of the of the strengths of both, uh, it would be difficult to get concessions. I do believe that if the um, if the uh, EU side uh, would um, agree to no, not bring in ideological issues into the BTIA, sometimes they have to because of the European Parliament. But if those ideologies could be removed from the BTIA. Um, given the sensitivities of, of India, which you so beautifully explained, uh, Excellency, uh, it would be much easier to get an agreement because, believe me, the political will to have such an agreement with the EU is much stronger in India than with the UK. The Indian side really would like to have a broad-based agreement with the European Union. Uh, the, the FTA was uh, an initiative of, on the British side, they were very keen to do it to show that after Brexit, they are on, on top, top of things. So uh, that is not a priority shared in India. India would like to have it, but because of some of the ideologies that have been introduced, ideologies which for India is really a no-no, uh, that is one of the reasons why it got stuck, and I'm sure Ambassador Suto knows much better than me. And secondly, I really would like to say that the with the EU in uh, strategy on the Indo-Pacific. Um, this is an area where you, where the EU will find that India now uh, feels that one of its priority concerns have been accommodated on the on the side of the European Union, and that would make it much easier, uh, perhaps, uh, to get concessions or or agreements for us on other tricky issues because everything in diplomacy. Um, Professor Bawa said that we are practitioners. Uh, practitioners know that everything in diplomacy is give and take. And when such an important give has been given, then surely we would be able to, to take. So uh, I would just wanted to add those few points because of what was said about the, uh, the BTIA and the FTA. Uh, merci beaucoup. Thank you very much, Ambassador Mukherjee. Um, it's one of our panelists. We need to take the floor. No. Uh, thank you. I would just uh, want to uh, respond to what uh, Ambassador Lena said and what Ambassador Mukherjee said. I fully agree uh, that uh, the EU uh, negotiations are of, of a different league altogether, and uh, you know we cannot compare with the UK. Uh, but uh, as um, uh, Ambassador Mukherjee mentioned, now that uh, uh, when UK was part of the EU, there have, may have been issues uh, they, that they raised. Now that they are out of EU, I think uh, the EU position is more consolidated and more more homogeneous. So, uh, but uh, but I would also like to say that um, uh, things have changed in India. Uh, there is now a, a, a very clear realization that we want to do trade agreements with economies which are complementary to India. And uh, we have uh, revived, for instance, our negotiations with uh, Australia. Uh, we have concluded our negotiations with UAE. Uh, we are uh, negotiating with the U Eurasian economic uh, community. Uh, we are also uh, negotiating with Israel. So I think, uh, you know, FTA agreements face some headwinds in the past few years, but I think now uh, we are facing tailwinds. And we want to move ahead uh, quickly. And uh, in that context, I had mentioned uh, UK that uh, the, the intention and the will is very, very clear and strong on our side. And uh, we have a window of uh, political opportunity in this coming months, and we should just uh, uh, utilize them. I am not comparing the scale and the in enormity, uh, in enormity the, the, the trade deal with the EU. EU is uh, one of our biggest uh, trading partners and investor and uh, we want we know that we are aware of the difficulties but i would also like to maintain that uh, some of these no go areas which were barriers in the past we have agreed to discuss them sustainability you know uh, government procurement uh, gi 
and uh, many other areas where we would not uh, earlier we thought you know trade should not be mixed up with other issues uh, we have agreed to to look at them and and uh, we have agreed to discuss them and and i think uh, uh, that shows our 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 intention and our will and uh, we are waiting for a positive response from uh, the eu we have uh, recently received some communications we are responding to that but i think uh, uh, apart from the communications i think we should soon uh, get down to uh, get down on the table and and, and start uh, discussing real uh, facts and figures Yes, Manuel, if I may, I will also briefly come in. Uh, simply, um, I, I can understand the impatience actually on both sides to, um, to start the actual uh, negotiation. And um, let me remind there is a clear political commitment on both sides. So we are definitely going to follow up. But I don't want to leave the meeting, the gathering, with the impression that we are not working on it because we are. Uh, Sandeep has already mentioned that the two negotiating, the two teams have already met um, repeatedly. Uh, there is an exchange of correspondence. We are into a preparatory phase, um, which, um, uh, which inevitably takes some time. And uh, from our time, it has also required obviously consulting at 27. So I, I think we are, we are proceeding um, uh, and um, I think the work has been productive, including the, 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 last, uh, the last meeting. Uh, the ex uh, old exchanges have been reflective of the spirit that Sandeep was referring to. It is a very um, positive spirit uh, 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 oriented towards um, a result that I'm, su I'm sure we will achieve. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Go. Uh, those Professor Salma Baba wants to say final words before Hugo makes a conclusion. So, uh, thank you, Ambassador. I would ac actually like to ask you um, on the uh, Indo-Pacific, apart from the, uh, you know, the forum which is uh, slated to take place in February, uh, any other specific uh, you know, in Indo-French uh, cooperation do you see taking place in the six-month uh, calendar? Uh, sure, no, there, 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 are, there are a lot actually. Well, uh, I should have mentioned uh, uh, also back-to-back uh, -back with the uh, Indo-Pacific Forum, there will, there will be a, a meeting of uh, uh, development finance institutions uh, from the Indo-Pacific, and it will be jointly organized by the French Development Agency called AFD and the Exim Bank of India. And that's really that's really very important because we have to we have to pull we have to uh, um, uh, to make some finance available for countries in the region. We all see what's going on, for example, in Sri Lanka, uh, in the Maldives, in many places in the region. I mean, uh, I can I can we have all these examples in mind. We have really to provide some, some alternative and uh, uh, I will be glad when uh, we can announce something, when, for example, my country in India can jointly uh, announce a development project in, a, in another country in the Ocean region. Um, what are we doing on a bilateral basis? Well, it goes, it goes a little beyond the, uh, uh, the topic of, the, of tonight, but we, we obviously will we'll continue to, uh, to do some uh, uh, info sharing, some uh, some uh, joint patrolling. We're going to also to have some uh, 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 Indian uh, ships or, or reconnaissance planes uh, uh, coming to refuel or to to our bases in the Indian Ocean or, and so on and so forth. So there there are an, obviously a lot of uh, also joint exercises and many things. So. There's a lot uh, going on, and uh, let's say one, one of the things we are very proud of is that uh, COVID has not disrupted the, uh, the schedule, and we 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 still we've been cooperating very uh, intensely uh, over the last two years. Um, does Hugo wants to have a final word on uh, on our meeting? 
Well, thank you very much, Manuel. Actually, um, I, I think that um, uh, we all agree uh, that the discussion has, has mirrored the, 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 the shared conviction that there is a lot of potential indeed to be harnessed in, in the in this steadily stronger um, strategic partnership between the EU and India. So uh, a number of uh, topical areas have been great, um, economic relations, trade, climate, uh, the, the green uh, revolution, the digital transformation, connectivity, the Indo-Pacific construct and the security agenda. So EU-India relations are full of opportunities that in several dimensions and, in, and these in an increasingly erratic uh, world that the uh, international scenario where, where the UN India um, can significantly contribute to a, a rules-based uh, system of world governance and um, and to a, co a cooperative approach to to international relations. So um, with this, I think I would uh, I would uh, simply like to 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 thank you to to thank the French presidency for for organizing uh, the event and uh, let me also express my my appreciation for the contribution by. Uh, by all panelists, um, uh, starting with um, uh, Joint Secretary Chakra, Chakravarti and uh, Sandeep, with also the opportunity to thank you for, for your efforts day in, day out, uh, to foster EU-India um, uh, relations. And, and Ambassador Mukherjee and um, Professor Baba, as always, it's a, it's a real pleasure to, 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 uh, to share a panel with you and, um, and hear your take on um, on uh, on new India ties, so I, I would I would close here from my side, Emmanuel. I think the new India strategic partnership is growing stronger, and it's it's incumbent on us to make the most of it and um, and um, and build on our shared values and and converging interests, also in the pursuit of global common goods. Thank you very much. Very much, Hugo. Thank you uh, to all of you. I think there's a lot of uh, goodwill, common understanding, energy, and uh, we shall use this momentum as uh, well as possible. I'm very uh, uh, enthusiastic, very positive, very encouraged by our discussions. Thank you very much. Thank you.